and Kelly Nash will have that and much more on Quick Pitch presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. You think Aaron Judge took a long time to break a home run record when Henry Aaron tied Babe Ruth's career record with 714 home runs. He did so on the very last day of the 1974 regular season, but he didn't get to 715 until April 18th. 1975 some six months later and although it may feel like longer we've only had to wait a week to see Aaron judges 62nd but if you were looking for a sign that game two of the Rangers and Yankees doubleheader would be judges time look no further than the Yankees record entering the game 99 and 61 and with just two games left in the season judge said case closed now it's the by now, you must be familiar with the freeze. You know, the freeze, the sprinter in the spandex suit who races Braves fans on the warning track. Even though he affords his unlucky opponents a huge head start, what looks improbable, even impossible, almost always ends with the freeze victorious. Well, kudos to Mike Puma of the New York Post and others for applying the phenomenon of the freeze to the NL East. The Braves gave the Mets quite the head start this season, 10 and a half games as late as June 1st. You know how the rest went. They called up Michael Harris the second, moved Spencer Strider to the rotation, and smoked the Mets down the stretch. And as we head into Tuesday, the Braves' magic number to clinch the division sat at one. Riddle for you. He won a close election, suffered a setback, and then came roaring back to the top years later and reclaimed his title. You thought I was talking about Justin Verlander? No, it's the 22nd and 24th president of the United States, Grover Cleveland, of course. But let's get back to Verlander while we're here. After sitting out half a presidential term, I don't think anyone predicted this. Our Pedro Martinez is calling him one human freak. The 39-year-old Verlander woke up Tuesday 17-4 and four with a 1.80 ERA across his 27 starts this year, meaning he had one start remaining to close his case on what could be a third Cy Young on that resume. Luis Arise is the only thing standing in the way of Aaron Judge and a triple crown. While Judge is blowing away the competition in home runs and RBIs, he's in a battle for the batting title. Arise says he wants to win it fighting. He missed three of the last four games with a hamstring injury, but found himself atop the Twins lineup Tuesday. Arise entered play batting 315, while Mr. All Rise, Aaron Judge, entered the day batting 311. Judge stayed put at 311 after going two for seven across Tuesday's doubleheader. And here now is how things played out for a rise. Welcome to the draft lottery era as part of the new CBA to help limit tanking. The team with the worst record will no longer automatically secure the number one pick in the 2023 player draft. The first six picks will be chosen by a lottery system. And then after that, the rest are decided by record. Now with this new system, the three teams with the worst records all have the same chance at the first overall pick, a 16 and a half percent chance. And then the odds decrease, but all 18 non-playoff teams have a chance to snag one of the first six selections in next year's draft. But keep an eye on Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. They enter play Tuesday tied for third worst record. You got all that? This was one of the gems from Tuesday, and here now are the rest of your Capital One premiere plays. Only two minutes off. That's Bill Ripken for you. Great call by our guy, and what a moment for the Yankees outfielder, and that was a legendary moment presented by Budweiser. Still not over it. That'll do it here for Quick Pitch. Bye, guys.